Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and today I want to show you how to remap your keyboard, give you a couple of ideas on what stuff to actually map to it, because you can speed up your editing considerably by using the keyboard instead of the mouse as much as possible. Now if you hear some strange sounds in the background, like a chainsaw, that is not my girlfriend dismembering the corpses that we have lying around here but it's actually uh, people cutting down trees uh, outside of our apartment, so don't worry, never mind that. Okay, let me first of all show you how to actually remap stuff to your keyboard. Go to the settings tab in your project window, hit the letter K on the keyboard, double click, so this is the keyboard that I'm usually using but to change it we'll have to open the command palette. Go to tools and open the command palette or just press uh, command 3 or control 3 on a PC. You have three radio buttons down here. One is called button to button reassignment. That means you can just drag and drop stuff from the command palette to your keyboard. One is active palette. Now if you press the button, it just does what it says. For example, now we're doing a match frame. And there's menu to button reassignment, where you press the button that you want to reassign first, and then say what kind of a menu item you want to assign to it. Let's say the console is now on F13, whatever. <laughs> So that's basically the ways to reassign buttons. Now let me show you a couple of buttons that I use all the time. Here we have match frame. It's on F2. If you're in your sequence and just want to find the corresponding frame in your master clip, just hit the match frame button and it will open that uh, frame in the source window. Usually when you hit match frame, it adds an endpoint just where the matched frame is. So I usually don't like that because it messes up the endpoints and outpoints that I've already set. So I, don't, I usually don't want that to happen. So I've just added the option key to a match frame. You can simply drag the, the option key to any button that you've already assigned and it will automatically add the option key to when you press it. So in this case the option match frame means don't set any endpoints. Another great but, uh, shortcut is render effect and render in out. Now render in out is here in the clip drop down menu. It's actually now grayed out because I haven't uh, got any effects there. Um, you have to assign it using menu to button reassignment, obviously. Something else that you should definitely map to your keyboard is top and tail. These are not mapped to the keyboard by default on Media Composer, but on News Cutter they are. They actually come from News Cutter, uh, but they're now available, you know, they've been available for, for a while uh, on Media Composer, but you have to manually map them to your keyboard. Now I have them on INO, which is always fun if somebody else uh, uses my keyboard settings and just destroys the whole sequence by just pressing a couple of buttons. Top and tail just uh, removes everything in a clip that is before the position marker if it's top and everything that is after the position marker if it's tail. So let's say top here and we'll remove the beginning of that clip. Tail there, the end is gone. Top, tail, tail, top. Awesome. These are some of the functions that I use all the time. It makes editing so much easier and quicker because what I usually do is just edit a bunch of stuff into the timeline and then honing it by using top and tail and trimming it down and uh, Top and tail are the, the chainsaws while, <laughs> while the trim then is the fine tuning, right? <laughs> Speaking of the chainsaws again. Uh, also, I never got used to moving through the sequence by using the arrow keys. I used those to um, zoom in and out of the timeline. 
zooming in, zooming out, because this is actually less detail and this is more detail. Those can be found in the fast menu of the timeline. Then I have the focus key, which just zooms into wherever you are in the timeline. And I have the show entire sequence that is also found here in the fast menu of the timeline, which quickly shows you the entire sequence. And another button that I find incredibly useful is toggle source record in timeline. Now I have that on shift escape because uh, escape just toggles source and record window. And so it makes sense for me to put it on shift escape. Toggle source record in the timeline. If you press that button, it's actually the same thing as this little one down here. What it will do is, for example, if you have a really long clip in your source window, it is incredibly tedious to navigate through it using this uh, source window timeline. Wouldn't it be great to just have a timeline just like that where you could just easily navigate through it and zoom in and zoom out and show the entire sequence and just focus and do any, all the stuff like that. Now press shift escape or wherever, wherever you put it or just press the button down here. And you can actually do that. Now the timeline that you see here actually is the one of the source window and you can just zoom in, zoom out, do whatever you like. It's great, especially if uh, you have like 30 minutes of captured footage in, in one clip. You can just navigate through this uh, footage much, much more conveniently. So that's the, that's the shortcuts that I, that I love best um, and that I use constantly. If you have any shortcuts that you would like to add, because I always love to learn of new ones that are cool and that I didn't think of, uh, just go ahead and drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website. On the website, you can, of course, also uh, watch past episodes and uh, subscribe to uh, the podcast on iTunes or your favorite RSS reader. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash screencast or just, uh, you know, add reply to me or whatever, give me feedback. Also check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash screencast. Did you notice the URL changed because I have as many, so many followers that I could actually give the Facebook page um, a name that, that people can actually remember. So it's facebook.com slash screencast. And if you'd like to see what stuff I do professionally, check out uh, my professional website at editguy.de. All right, uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a nice day. See you next time. Goodbye.